Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Life is Strange. With your host of Audience and Exit 45. And I don't know why you would have that screen size any smaller, but okay. So welcome everyone to Life is Strange. Um, this game just released today, actually. The only game I've ever pre-ordered. Um, just because I thought it looked interesting. It's kind of a different take on... Oh, the whole teen world and stuff like that. So I'm going to crank down the resolution a bit. Something a bit more manageable. You know what? Crank into that. Alright, that should do it. Yes, I want to keep the settings. Alright, now hopefully I don't die from massive lag or anything like that. Alrighty, we have subtitles, that's good. Alrighty, and I think we're set to go. So basically the core concept of Life is Strange is there are two girls, one of whom you're playing as, and the other something happens to her, I think. But you figure out that one of them has the ability to manipulate time, or basically go back in time. And uh, it's a bit like a interactive story in a similar sense to The Walking Dead that was released by Telltale Games. So it's functioning in a very similar way, so we have choices that are going to affect our outcome. But that is about all I know, so without further ado, let's get into the game. Well, this is a dramatic beginning. Okay, so we can walk around using WASD. I don't think there's any way for me to run. What the hell is that? What is that? I guess that's the tree trunks with stuff going out of it? That's bizarre. I guess I'm sprinting right now? Of course I know how to move the camera. It's gaming essentials these days. Know how to use your mouse and WASD. We are in the middle of a storm, and for some reason we're heading to a lag house. I'm not understanding what's going on right now. But I guess all will unfold. Holy shit. Uh. Okay. Suddenly this became Twister. Come on, Max. You can make it. No comment on the gigantic ass tornado in the middle of the alley of the valley there. Oh, I guess that's what the cutscene's for. <laughs> That's what I said. God damn, I think that's bigger than a level 5 or whatever the heck it's called on the tornado scene. So much for the lighthouse. Whoa. 
That was so surreal. Famously called film, little pieces of time. But he, but he could be talking about photography, as he likely was. Okay, I'm in class. Everything's cool. I am okay. From light to shadow, from color to chiaroscuro. Now, can you give me an example of a photographer who perfectly captured the human condition in black and white? I didn't fall asleep, and that Anybody? sure didn't feel like a dream. Bueller. Weird. Diane Arbus. There you go, Victoria. Why Arbus? Because of her images of hopeless faces. You feel like totally haunted by the eyes of those sad mothers and children. She saw humanity as tortured, right? And frankly, it's bullshit. Shh, 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 shh. Keep that to yourself. Seriously, though, I could frame any one of you in a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. And any one of you could do that to me. Isn't that too easy? Too obvious? What if Arbus chose to capture people at the height of their beauty or innocence? She had a brilliant eye. So, she could have taken another approach. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of her work. I prefer Robert Frank. Me too, Victoria. He captured the essence of post-war beat America. And there was honesty about the economic conditions of the era. But a beauty in the struggle. You, you don't have beauty without a beat. Which explains why Frank was Kerouac's photographic muse. And both were the great chroniclers of the 1950s. Well, we've all seen that iconic shot of Kerouac on the balcony. And if you haven't, shame, shame. Capturing the romantic urban solitude of the 20th century poet. You dig? Now, contrast Frank's stark Americana with Salvador Dali's surrealist photographs. Like Cocteau, he was a true Renaissance man. And his famous self-portraits are famous early examples of that truly awful word you pesky kids love so much. The selfie. <laughs> and it's a great tradition, and I wholeheartedly fight for your right to self-expression. Or selfie expression. <laughs> Sorry. I know. So if anybody wants to question the portrait as modern narcissism, they could go back hundreds of years to blame society. Speaking of questions, I bet you thought I'd talk all the way until the bell rang. It's your turn to lecture us. Now, based on the chapters, I have no doubt you all memorized, who can tell me the name of the actual process that led to the birth of the self-portrait? No clue. Um, now, regarding this picture, I'm trying to click on it, but for some reason my Anybody? mouse keeps just... This does not bode well. Okay, drag mouse to aim at the photo and hold left mouse button to interact with it. Then drag mouse towards look. Oh! Just jump right in with an answer. Oh, okay. Look at this crap. How can I show this to Mr. Jefferson? I can hear the class laughing at me now. So I'm guessing this is a photography class, in case you didn't get that from all the dialogue. Oh my god. Oh, oh, okay, I see how this works now. Okay. So let's see. What is what is in the pencil case? I wonder. This was in the chapters you read. I can't believe I still have this pencil case. I should upgrade to the twenty-first century, but I like it old school. So do I, actually. I mean, I do like computers and all that stuff, but I like I like writing in a journal. I like writing in. You I like did using a typewriter. The chapters, right? Um, I didn't. I don't know if this gal did. Whatever her name is. I can take a selfie. I should right take now. a picture to prove I'm still here. Plus, it's perfect for my portfolio. What? And I have to get my daily Your selfie quota. Oh God! What? Aim at the camera, hold left mouse button, drag mouse downwards, and release. What? I do love my analog camera. I should take a quick picture now. If this were a Why? He's asking a question. I would agree. This is pretty still for. All of this stuff. I'm gonna look at what is I this? I haven't my kept up with my journal as much as I should. Okay, I'm guessing that's her photo, her photography journal or something. If anybody else looked at this, what would they think? October first, my favorite month, the best weather of the year. I love watching the leaves change color, turning into tiny flames. But it's still too damn hot. Thanks global warming, and I can't bust out the big coats and sweaters or scary movies yet. Soon. 
Kate let me borrow The October Country by Ray Bradbury. I haven't read much by him, which caused Warren to almost revoke my geek cred before I held up my copy of Battle Royale, but he nails the autumn atmosphere of small towns. The last time I wore a Halloween costume was with Chloe. I have pictures in one of my old albums. I should find a real Halloween party to crash so I can experience some social mingling. It's that or a Vortex Club Stroke Fest swimming party. Or is that Backstroke Fest? You so punny, Max. I don't understand that, but okay. At least I'm trying to climb out of my cocoon. I shouldn't expect my life to completely change after a few weeks of Blackwell Academy. As my parents love telling me on a loop, you have all the time in the world. Wow, there's a lot of pages in this thing. I'm going to... Wait, what? Anybody? Just, anybody just a minute. If looked at this, what would they think? What the hell is this? Oh, this is my objective thingy. What the heck? So, who's Jefferson? Not only is Mark Jefferson one of the best photographers in the world, he's also my teacher. And one of the reasons I wanted to come to Blackwell. How often do you get to be mentored by one of your inspirations? I've always loved his deco and goth style, and he's so versatile with all of his incredible print and advertising work. Still, Jefferson can be a bit condescending. He's pretty hip for his age, but kind of aloof and sometimes pretentious. He has this smug smile when he thinks he's right. But I do think he's preparing us for how tough it is to be a full-time artist. He acts like he understands my own work and obsession with analog images. He really wants me to enter a photo in this everyday hero contest, but I've done a good enough I've done a good job of avoiding that. The winner gets to fly to San Francisco to represent Blackwell Academy and get national exposure. I'd like to think my work could be good enough to win, and I'm honored Jefferson even bugs me about the contest. Huh. Duh. Okay. So who are these? So I'm guessing this is kind of a a scrapbook, more or less, to see this who all does is. Not bode well. Hi, a scrapbook to kind of get objectives and a little bit of history and see what's going on or what's been going on anyway. What's in our purse? Just jump right My in. My little camera bag is battered, but still kicking. Ah, it's a camera bag. Okay. I guess I'll take a selfie for whatever reason. This was in the chapters you read. Shh, shh, shh. I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. What? <laughs> of course, as you all know, the photo portrait has been popular since the early 1800s. Your generation was not the first to use images for selfie expression. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Said that already. The point remains that the portraiture has always been a vital aspect of art and photography for as long as it's been around. Now, Max, since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, oh can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self portraits? Oh, God, I have no idea. Uh. This is kind of an awkward. I did know. I did know, but I kind of forgot. You either know this or not, Max. Is there anybody here who knows their stuff? Louis Daguerre was a French painter who created daguerreotypes, a process that gave portraits a sharp reflective style like a mirror. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. Very good, Victoria. The daguerrean process brought out fine detail in people's faces making them extremely popular from the 1800s onward. The first American daguerreotype self-portrait was done by Robert Cornelius. You can find out all about him in your textbook, or even online. Oh, thank goodness. And guys, don't forget the deadline to submit a photo in the Everyday Heroes contest. I'll fly out with the winner to San Francisco, where you'll be feted by the art world. It's great exposure, and it can kickstart a career in photography. So Stella and Alyssa, get it together. Taylor, don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry, too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. (sighs) 
So that one gal is a bit of... Yeah, the one over there. I already forgot her name. Doesn't waste a second kissing ass. Victoria. Okay. I thought so. I just wasn't sure. That's like... Ugh. I wouldn't mind if she wasn't so smug about being a bitch. <laughs> Damn, they have carbon fiber tripods here. The ball head even has a pan lock. Okay, so Max God, is... I'm such a photo nerd. Took the words right out of my mouth. So what's here? That was amazing when Mr. Jefferson took a class picture the first week. Even though I didn't want to be in the picture at all, it was fairly fucking cool to watch him at work framing us. God, and I thought I was shy. Holy crap, Max. <laughs> uh, like, seriously, I have basically very little, not no social life, but very little. And this Max is, like, one-upping me here. <laughs> I don't want to be in pictures. I don't even want to be anything. It's just, I don't know. I love seeing Mr. Jefferson's awesome photos on these magazine covers. Okay, so... Pop Vine is Grunge Dead, featuring the latest works from Mark Jefferson. Ten reasons to get electronic mail. So what time period is this? this? Is this the, uh, the turn of the century, or is this more like 2010, 2014, 2015 kind of deal? Because this is looking a little bit old school. Not super old school. I mean, you're not having the, the super old... Okay, this is definitely not turn of the century, because they, they didn't really have much in the way of flat screen monitors back then. That printer is amazing. I'd love to see how it reproduces my pictures. I could pump out a whole gallery show with that thing. Okay, now this computer. When I don't suck. Someday. God. No self-confidence, Max. Jeez. Don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, you, I mean you're focused in the self-picture in the... God, I can't even talk right now. I mean, your focus in the picture that you took of yourself before that we looked at was not exactly what you would call intended, but you can see everything on the backdrop. I mean, whatever. Alright, so what is going on here? Is this, uh, this looks like Photoshop almost. Obviously Blackwell spent bank on the computers here. Yeah, if she's saying that, this is probably around 2000. Seven, I want to say? Something like that? Maybe 2005? Hi, Kate. Is she on the phone? No, she's not on the phone. She's just holding her head. Kate looks so sad and quiet today. Poor thing. Now I wish I wouldn't have read this. Purge. Oh, my goodness. Dear Kate, we love your porn video. Blackwell Academy. Oh, that sucks. Hey, Kate? You okay? Hi, Kate. Oh, hi, Max. She looks so tired. Hope you... what? About what? You seem quiet today. You seem quiet today. Just thinking too much. You wanna go grab a cup of tea? I hear that. Wanna go grab a cup of tea and bitch about life? Thanks, but not today. I have to go over homework. No worries. Let's hang later. Sure. God, I wish I could just pat her on the shoulder, you know, and just say everything's gonna be alright. Don't know if that's gonna be the case, but you know the hell? Hmm. Huh. This might make a cool shot. What is that? Someone in Amber Forever. Rachel in Amber. Huh. Okay. I guess we can take a photo. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. I like that. Macro eyes. I already got an achievement. We do. Okay, and this is Victoria's stuff. I'm just going to take a look. I don't actually want to use it. Even her school books are gift-wrapped. 
I can't believe she made fun of me in class. What is she, 15 years old? Yeah. And people laughed. Well, because you're the shy one and you're not standing up for yourself. I mean, if you had a really good comeback, then everyone would be laughing at her, not you, but... Uh, I know how it is. Of course. Victoria has to have the bestest, newest, most expensive everything. Okay, and she has a tablet. This is probably... this is probably 2008, something like that, I'm guessing. Uh, don't really want to interrupt. It's not a bad TV. Man, he even has the best plasma HDTV for a class monitor. Can't wait to watch some more documentaries on this bad boy. <laughs> oh, she's such a geek. I love it. So cool that we can check these out anytime. The Decisive Moment by Henri Cartier-Bresson? That's rare. Any leap of its mad respect. The amazing Eugene Smith? Good to see Avedon among the masters. Dolly, of course. Lots of people I haven't heard of yet. I guess that's why I'm here. Well, I just got blown out of the water on both accounts. <laughs> I used to be a bookworm, but I I only heard of one of those people. I'm feeling pretty pathetic right now. Here's All the poster right. for the contest. Mr. Jefferson really expects me to enter. Why? I don't know if I'm ready for my 15 minutes of infamy. Well... Sometimes you just gotta take that big leap of faith. Ugh, I hate saying that phrase. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm looking at this and just seeing myself in so many things. Are you an everyday hero? Find out. Enter to win. Everyday Heroes Photo Contest. Submit an image that best represents yourself or others in heroic action. Deadline, October 15th, 2013. Okay, so this is definitely after 2010. I'm feeling kind of silly. Some of the tech look kind of old in here, but oh well. The winner will fly to San Francisco and represent their school in the National Everyday Heroes Competition at the Day Young Museum of Art on October 20th, 2013. You may submit one image on approved paper for consideration. For those 18 and under, a parent permission form must be included with the image. So what is Max's age? I'm guessing this is a high school, not a not a college campus. So is Max an adult legally, or is she living on her own? I don't. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So I guess we'll find out. Whoosh. Mess around with the hair physics a little bit. Uh, I don't really want to interrupt, but I kind of want to talk to them. And To interrupt or not to interrupt? Um, oh, I can look at him. Okay, I don't have to interrupt immediately just by walking towards him. This is ridiculous. Him. I always get so shy and nervous around Mr. Jefferson. Because you look up to him. I, I totally understand why you would get nervous. Because you look up to him and you don't really want to look like a screwball around him. <laughs> uh... Every time I look at Victoria, I feel like she's talking smack about me. That's a bit of a rash assumption, but uh, considering what she just did about ten minutes ago, I'm not surprised. Uh, fuck it, let's talk to him. Excuse me, Mr. Jefferson, can I talk to you for a moment? Yes, excuse you. No, Victoria, excuse us. I'd never let one of photography's future stars avoid handing in her picture. <laughs> I'm gonna say do I have to because I'm not gonna say I didn't have any time it just sounds like a cop out do I have to? I just don't think it's that big a deal oh. Max, you're a better photographer than a liar now I know it's a drag to hear some old dude lecture you but life won't wait for you to play catch up you're young, the world is yours blah blah blah, right? but you do have a gift you have the fever to take images, to frame the world only the way you envision it. Now, all you need is the courage to share your gift with others. And that's what separates the artist from the amateur. Um, that's not just what separates the artist from the amateur. I mean, it, it does take some skill. But I'm going to take a look. Okay, these are people. 
is the episode. I have no idea what this is. Oh, these are locations! Okay, so this is kind of a map. SMS. What? Uh, the hell is this? Okay, whatever. Alright, so we're on the first page. July 10th, 2013. I got accepted into Blackwell Academy! Woohoo! Okay, so this is probably a college then, not just a high school. If words could dance, this would be a rave, even though I've never been to one. But who cares, because I got into Blackwell Academy, a unique and famous private school for seniors. Oh. Okay, that explains it then. No kids allowed! I didn't think I would be so excited, since it's not like I didn't used to live in the same town. But when I saw the text on the Blackwell Scholarship Office, I could literally feel my pulse speed up. I thought it was going to say, sorry, thanks for playing. It took me a few seconds before I read the whole thing. I guess I wanted to enjoy that last moment of blissful ignorance, and when I saw the first word, congratulations, I think I screamed. My mom cried and my dad laughed. They're so weird. But they're happy, and this means extra financial support because they don't have to pay anything to Blackwell. This means new clothes, and if I can work it, a new laptop. Oh, and I have to keep telling myself in caps that I am going to Blackwell Academy! <laughs> I love her enthusiasm, it's great. August 18th of 2013. So this is it. I'm leaving Seattle to go back to Arcadia Bay. Usually people go to the high school closest to home. I suppose I am too, it's just that I haven't lived there for five years. Out of all the best photography programs in the world, I choose to go to the smallest, back in a town I was excited about leaving. It's ironic. Maybe I wanted to come back all along, just to see if Chloe and I are still even friends. But I do wish Chloe could have moved with us to Seattle. That city was made for her. When we would play pirates in our rooms and in the woods, it seemed like Seattle was that fabled faraway island of treasure and adventure that we were always seeking, with coffee shops. But Seattle wasn't like a fable. Au contraire. Now Blackwell Academy seems more exotic to me than any other place in the world. To study photography under Mark Jefferson. <sighs> Insert hearts and flowers. Plus there will be cool diverse students from everywhere, like Victoria the asshole. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. It won't be like my high school now. I never really found a groove with my classmates. Or boys. I'm lucky I have a couple great friends here, but it's time to ship out. Oh dear. Oh god, the puns. So maybe Arcadia Bay will actually turn out to be the island of treasure and adventure I've been looking for. August 25th of 2013. Shit is crazy here! I didn't realize how much crap I had to pack until I had to pack all my crap. Mom and Dad are getting a little too... Mom and Dad? Mom and Dad are, looking, are getting a little too excited and clearing out my room. Though I caught Mom crying when she was packing my shirts. Cause you're getting out of the house, but they still love you! That made me want to cry like a little girl, and never leave Seattle. So instead of packing, I feel like burning all my clothes and just raiding a thrift store to build up a new Max wardrobe over my junior year. <laughs> Not that I even have an old Max wardrobe. God, just I hear about this chick and just... Ugh. I have no wardrobe either, except for a whole bunch of dragon and dinosaur shirts. That are awesome, by the way. Nobody will know me except for Chloe, and who knows how different we are now. So I can cut my hair, get a tat, and make and some piercings. Maybe date a cute foreign exchange artiste from Paris or Rome. I can do anything unless I get busted. And there will be so many super cool chances for my photography to get exposed. Thinking about that is when I get scared, but excited. And then I don't feel like crying at all. I get tingles down my arms, sensing the universe opening up for me. I can't wait to leave. I just want things to be different at Blackwell. I like the little cat that's motivational in here. Go you. <laughs> that's great. Uh, I really like Max so far. Maybe because she's just hitting so close to home, but... Oh, God. September 2nd, 2013, 12.07 a.m. My first entry from my new dorm room the night before my first day at Blackwell. Whew. I haven't had any time to write or even take pictures since I got here. My shit is in boxes all over the room, which is small, but mine, and I never want to leave. 
I can't wait to decorate. I plan a whole wall of photos. I did meet some of my dorm mates, though I suck at remembering names, so I won't bother right now. <laughs> but I think I can already see who's going to be cool to me and who's not. It's a bitch trying to get settled into a new school and social scene after I finally found good friends in Seattle. But I'm here now, and this is the start of my new life. Sweet dreams. Oh, this doesn't look promising. September 3rd, 2013. Blackwell sucks ass. I told myself not to whine so soon, but damn, the day started like Christmas morning. I barely had any dreams because I was so pumped to start my first official day of my new life. Like a dork, I couldn't figure out what to wear, so I chose what was on the floor. I'm no good with names and faces right away, but I picked up some names like Kate Brooke, Taylor, Alyssa. And how could I forget Victoria Chase? Rich, stylish, and titled. I could feel instant judgment when she looked at my raggedy-ass clothes. As if I meant Blackwell to strike fashion poses. Maybe I'm being extra crispy sensitive, but I think Victoria wants life here to be like her own reality show. Ugh. So that wasn't fun, along with my general social unease. I thought it would be easier being back. Call the Wambulance. I don't want this day to end all woe is Max. It was incredible to walk across the green campus in the morning mist. I loved the stone steps and brick walls of Blackwell. Everything is a picture waiting to be taken. Speaking of, at least one great thing did happen today. Mr. Jefferson's photography class. <sighs> There's more to tell, but journal, forgive me, I'm truly wiped out. What's with the bird stamps? September 4th. I have an assload of homework already. So much bullshit. At least give us noobs a day to acclimate. But to prove I'm not a total loser, I made a new friend in my science class. His name is Warren Graham, and he's a serious geek. Plus, he's dark and witty. I like that. He comes across as kind of a know-it-all, but it turns out he does kind of know a lot. We talked about photographers, and he actually named a few I've never heard of. We traded numbers, and he'll be a good starting partner, or a good friend. I'll need at least one based on the click action around here. I thought being 18 meant I didn't have to deal with this teenage drama anymore. I thought. Well, that kind of doesn't leave school, as far as I know. At least I get to research famous photographers for some of my homework. Mr. Jefferson assigned us a ton of reading, but this is exactly what I want to study. Jefferson is super cool and super chill. He doesn't try to be too hip, just says what he thinks and expects us to as well. I think he's a genius. Oh, gee, I want to marry him. Just joking. This one class is worth all the social dysfunction. So glad you said that just joking part. <laughs> September 15th. Homework is kicking my ass. I bet the teachers grade harder just to stop you from feeling special. But Victoria Chase and her snob minions still front like their honored guests of Blackwell. The bros here aren't that different. Nathan Prescott is Victoria's male clone, with way more money and attitude, if that's possible. His family is the oldest in Arcadia Bay, and I heard stories about them when I was a kid. The Prescotts give a shitload of bank to Blackwell, so Nathan acts like he literally owns the school. Probably kind of does. Yesterday during class, he put his feet on the Death Star test thing, and the teacher didn't say Jack. I'd get suspended. But him and Victoria are part of this silly elite vortex club that puts on popular parties and so they get their way. It's good to be the king and queen. Well, depends on what's going on in the background. You don't know enough about him yet. I don't want to slam everybody. I do like Kate Marsh. She's down the hall in one of my classes. She's so pretty and sweet and friendly. It makes her more beautiful than the beaches here, like Victoria, who think, Victor who think beauty is just your face and outfit. See, I'm already playing the drama games. No more. September 23rd. Finally had a chance to take some actual shots around campus today. A perfect blue sky day. I always forget how great I feel after I take pictures when I've been slacking off. Speaking of pictures, Mr. Jefferson told us about the National Everyday Heroes photo contest he wants us all to enter. The winner gets a trip to San Francisco and lots of publicity. He wants just one photo photograph from each student. This is exactly why I wanted to come to Blackwell, and of course I'm scared shitless to enter. <laughs> At least I have a couple weeks before the deadline in October, so I have plenty of time to stress and procrastinate. Ugh. Oh, and apparently that's her 18th birthday. Cool. 
September 30th. I don't know whether I love it or hate it here. Uh, I'm trying to keep up with my science class, of all things. Like I give a shit or even understand it. Not like me. Good thing I know Warren. Too bad I can't clone him to take my place in class. Miss Grant is much cooler than the class. She explains particle physics so even boneheads like me can kind of understand. I love how she relates society to science and vice versa. I can tell she's committed and passionate about life. Unlike some of us in her class, but I'm trying to engage more, even if it means asking actual questions in class instead of hiding in the back. I'm just glad I'm not the only social misfit here. Now, how much homework are you avoiding? Alright, and we already read this one. So, what I'm going to do is now take a look at the people. Max, the person we are playing as. My name is Max Caulfield, and ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to be a photographer. Again, not like me. I still don't know what I want to be, and I've already graduated high school. <laughs> I've always seen the world through my own lens finder. Maybe it's a way for me to be part of the world, but at a safe distance. Gah, that's exactly like me. <laughs> uh, anyway. For some reason, I was always drawn to old analog camera gear rather than digital tech. I love all kinds of styles and techniques, but for me, the instant camera selfie is the one I love most. I don't care if people make fun of me or not. I'm in great company, right? And now I've come all the way back to my childhood home to study photography at Blackwell Academy, a private school for 12th grade seniors. On a scholarship, even! I originally left behind Chloe, my best friend forever, at least until I left without talking to her once in five years. And it feels so weird to be back here without seeing her yet. So I'm 18 now, an official adult even though I don't always feel so wise or mature, and I'm ready to begin a whole new life here with Retro Camera at my side. Say cheese! I'm liking how this game is turning out so far. The uh, radial menu to interact with, with certain things is a little bit weird, but... Okay. Alright, let's take a look at Kate. It's an interesting button she's got going. I've forgotten if I've ever seen Kate Mar smile or laugh in the past month. She's really sweet and nice, even though the other students make fun of her abstinence campaign. Even if they act immature, everybody at Blackwell are seniors, not high school freshmen. She gets a lot of shit, in fact. I know she's involved in a lot of religious groups, but she doesn't preach to me, so I don't care. But she's been extra quiet and introverted the past couple weeks. She looks like she's in zombie mode. I wish I could help her, but I can barely help myself. I wonder if all that bullying has worn her down. I can see how it would. I have to make an effort to talk to her more often. Maybe invite her to tea or a movie. Although she's an adult, I bet she's not allowed to watch R-rated films. Well, considering that note we just found, I wonder if that's really the case. Okay. Shush, I'm dreaming. Then there's Victoria Chase, the elite of Blackwell Academy, and a total bitch. And I hate saying that. I just don't know why somebody who's so rich and beautiful needs to be so fucking mean. Eighteen-year-olds at a prestigious academy should be evolving into artists and scholars, not reality show contestants. Victoria does everything for maximum drama. She actually wastes her time calling me out in class and taunting Kate Marsh. For reals, I wish her parents could see her in action. They'd cut off that trust fund fast. Again, she's in the Vortex Club, and they seem to own the school, so maybe that's why she doesn't give a shit. The odd thing is that she does know art and photography. She can even say all those French names that break my tongue. Her work is a little cold, but she has a good eye. She also has an eye for Mr. Jefferson, who is so obvious that I'm embarrassed for her. Which is so obvious that I'm embarrassed for her. She does everything but sit in his lap. He keeps his distance, though. We can all tell she's trying to win the Everyday Hero Contest. I'm sure it drives her crazy when there's somebody she can't buy or seduce. Ha! <laughs> Alright, and I think that covers about everything. Okie dokie. What's going on here? 
Hey, it's a lighthouse. You can never escape the lighthouse here. Huh. I wonder if the lighthouse is like a a landmark for Arcadia Bay or something. Would make sense. What's this one? Even in pictures, the forest around here always looks mysterious. Yes, it does. I love that about the north the northwest. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Straight out of a frickin' fairy tale. It's just amazing. Of course, I, I hear a lot of complaints in Washington about how it looks really dead and dreary for nine months out of the year when it's kind of the wet season, if you will. Let's take a look at this camera. Whoa, Mr. Jefferson is not messing around with that monster. He probably paid 20 grand for that camera. I bet he gets pristine digital images. But I still dig my little instant camera. Uh, with that camera, it doesn't look like it would be $20,000, but again, I don't know my photography like Max does, so I could be totally wrong. Ah, uh, poor Kate. Alright. Let's go ahead and head out. I mean, I have been hanging around here long enough. Ugh. All right. How cute I looked yet. I was about to. You always Welcome look to the real world. Just cute. Hot. Then I might send you a special picture of Karen Clark. Oh my God. She plays it so sharp. I need a serious time out in the bathroom. Splash water on my face and make sure I don't look like a total loser. I hate that class, it's so fucking boring. Well, just put up a little bit of confidence into yourself. She's so fucking shy. She takes selfies with a giant camera. Love that guitar. And welcome everyone to Life is Strange. Episode 1, Chrysalis. I'm going to leave it off here for now. This has been almost an hour in the making. Um, but, uh... This is where I'm going to leave off. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this introduction episode. And I will see you in the next episode where we will continue on with Life at Blackwell Academy with Max. Have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.